friends and welcome back to my crafty space. My name is Crystal and today I am super excited to put together the last couple of spreads in this traveler's notebook I've been working on throughout the course of the month documenting a trip my family took last summer. Uh, if this is the first time you are tuning in, I do have three prior process videos taking you through the first, well I guess two or three fourths, three fourths of this album. So make sure to go and check those out if you haven't already. Today we are working on the last couple of pages and then I will also be stitching this album closed and uh, figuring out a closure for it. So without further ado, I am gonna go ahead and pull everything out and get to work. I will speed you guys up and then once everything is assembled and in the album, we will slow back down and close you guys out for the day. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump right in. So I am going to be pulling over the first of the few spreads that I will be putting together today. And uh, for this album, if this is the first time you are watching this, I am using a traditional scrapbooking collection in order to create this traveler's notebook. What's awesome about using a collection like this is that the entire album will be cohesive. The whole thing will go together. And uh, the the pieces that I had purchased from this specific collection, which is the Horizon collection from um, Pink Paisley designed by Paige Evans. Uh, so it's it's got like a travel theme to it. I had purchased the 6x8 paper pad. I think I had purchased like two or three of the 12x12 12 12 papers. It might have been three. Typically, I will purchase like a favorite one to use as a cover of sorts. And then I will usually purchase... Um, the papers that have cutouts on them. So I know that there was one with a frame cutout and there was one with um, like journaling cards to cut out. So I'll usually get those. And then if I have another favorite, you know, I might pick that one up as well. So I typically don't get a lot of 12 by 12 papers when I am purchasing a collection. I usually stick with just the smaller paper pad. Um, but in addition to the papers, I've also got the cardstock stickers. I've got the journaling pieces, ephemera pack, and I also have the floral ephemera pack. So that is pretty much what I'm working with today. Um, for the left-hand side of this page, this paper that you see here is like a topographical map. It's a corally pinky orange color and uh, worked really nicely with the greens that are in the pictures that you see. Um, I added a couple of cardstock stickers, so Day Trip as a title on the picture to the right, and then um, a tiny word phrase sticker that says Travel Far on the left side. I believe that's all I'm going to add to this one. Actually, no, I'm going to add a butterfly as well to the bottom left corner of the photo, right of that photo. So um, when I am making traveler's notebooks like this, when I'm making uh, for a vacation or you know, an album that I'm putting together all at once, I like to stick to a formula. So what my, and my formula tends to be the same. So if you've seen any of my other notebooks, you've probably noticed that many of them are structured the same way. I typically like to pick one favorite photo and use that as a full page photo. And then I will pick, you know, one or two sometime maybe three or four, like I think four might be the maximum number that I would pick to print in a smaller size to add to the opposite side. And I usually will use some kind of journaling card or pattern paper or you know something to that measure to cover up the opposite side from the photo. So for this one, uh, my parents had taken my camera. So this, these pictures that you're seeing right now, this spread and the last one, were from a hike that we took to the clay cliffs up in Traverse City area of Michigan. Um, so my parents were taking a picture of us at the Overlook, the pictures that you saw just before this one, but they took a selfie and we didn't know it until later. So this was their like photobomb selfie picture and it was really good of them. So that is obviously going to be the big picture. And then um, I just found a cardstock uh, like florally looking label sticker and I'm going to add a couple of tiny word phrases inside of that as well and that's going to be it for the picture of them. For the left hand side I have a I have a map that I saved so uh, you know I say this every time 
When I go on vacations, I always find ephemera to bring home. I will always look for maps or business cards, brochures, uh, anything that is paper that's flat. Sometimes, you know, other things. Uh, sometimes if the stores have a sticker with their label on it, you know, I'll, I'll buy the dollar sticker or whatever. And then I'll bring that stuff home and try to find ways to incorporate it into my album. So for this one, the map became my pattern paper. And then I added a journaling spot, which is um, one that I altered from in a creative bubble, I believe. So I added a journaling spot to the bottom of the map, and that's you know where the journaling went. But I just made sure not to cover up the part of the map where we would have been located for that specific day. I love the way that that turns out. I, I just love, love finding ways to use ephemera in my albums. It makes them a little bit more unique to the trip that we're taking. And this next spread is going to be a prime example of that. So our last stop in Traverse City was a winery called uh, the French, French Valley. French Valley Winery? I don't know if that's the whole name, but it's the French Valley. So they had this brochure that was a double flip. So it was like a normal brochure that you would open up. And then when you opened up the inside of the brochure, you saw this right here, this like sketch drawing of the entryway into their like farm area. And um, then you could flip open that page or those pages and see a four page spread in a brochure. So what I did is I took the inside parts. I wanted to create the same feeling. I wanted you to open up my book and see this page and then be able to open that again and have a four page spread from our experience at the French Valley. Now I didn't necessarily like the little images at the top of this brochure. So once I, once I cut it down to eight and a quarter tall, I just took a piece of pattern paper and um, cut a strip of it to fit up on the top right there. And then I will just adhere it on top of the photos so that it just, I don't know, it, I feel like it makes it look less like a brochure and more like some kind of cool sketch in my book, just like this. So that is the inside of the brochure. Um, then when I turn it over, you're going to see that I left a little bit of a lip from the brochure itself. That is to give me a spot to adhere these pages onto. Before we get there, I have this journaling card. It's another one from In a Creative Bubble. I used it earlier on in this album and made the color purple on it. So this one, I feel like it was originally yellow, this yellow, but it might not have been. I might have changed it to yellow too. And then I have a stamp set that I had purchased from Kelly Perky a while ago. I know it's no longer in stock, but it is called Vineyard. And it's all about wine tasting, which is perfect because we go wine tasting at least once a year. So I knew I would get a lot of use out of that stamp. So I found the phrase at the vineyard, stamped that in the title portion of that journaling card, and then uh, now that journaling card is complete. So that worked out really nicely. Um, I believe I'm going to set a lot of this to the side and work on getting this assembled. Okay, so here you can see. When you open up the brochure, you can see that tiny little flap there. Uh, that is where I'm going to adhere the photos or the inside portions to, and then I will I will tape up the back of it to place down into my book itself. I hope that make it'll make sense as we as we go there. Now you guys may have noticed that I am using score tape to add everything on, like all of the things. Uh, mostly this is because I am almost out of roller adhesive. The one you see there is my last one. My shipment should be getting here in a couple days, but uh, you know I just wanted to get this album done, and I have a ton of score tape in my stock. So score tape it is. Uh, but because of that, I do cut out a lot of the taping. Otherwise, you guys would just watch me use, you know, put square tape down and take off <laughs> the the paper part like over and over and over and over. So I do take a lot of that portion out. I left that one in though so you could see that I am adding it to that whole little flap and then I will add my photo on top of that. So the inside of this album, or of this album, of this flip portion is one giant photo. So I printed this photo at eight and a quarter tall by eight and a half inches wide. Then I could cut it down the middle 
I do have to trim, I already did it, a little bit excess off the edges just so that it goes into the album nicely and closes nicely. Uh, but it's when I get it all adhered down, you're going to see that it's actually one continuous photo, which was really cool. This gave me an opportunity to use a really big photo like that. So then I'm adhering the, the paper down onto the other flap inside and then uh, we'll add the photo to this portion as well. And that is going to be the two parts. So then all I have left to do is add on the extra pieces and embellish this, and then we can go ahead and add this to my album. So here is the way it's going to work. It's going to go into the album like that, and then we would open it up to see what it looks like. I believe I'm gonna add all of my adhesive to the back of everything I've left. So I have those two for this spread and then I have one more that's gonna go on the outside. That way I could just put the, put the tape away and not have to worry about it anymore. And then um, we'll add some adhesive to this little card here and then I can go ahead and get that down on the pattern paper. So there we go. There is our, what the flip out is going to look like. So on the inside here, the large photo that you see of us is sitting out on the lawn. So the cool thing about the French Vineyard Winery is that you can sit in these Adirondack chairs on this big grassy hill and look out over Lake Michigan. It is so peaceful and just so pretty, so pretty there. So the big middle picture is us sitting on the chairs and you know looking out over over the water. And then later, my daughter and my dad went down to the beach to look for seashells, well, shells, and to look for um for Patatsky's Patatsky stones. Blah, that's a mouthful. Uh, which they did find some. So they were looking for rocks and it was just so cute. They're like holding hands and cute down by the water. So I snapped a picture of them and it was super duper grainy. So I just turned it black and white and it works out just fine. Then I went ahead and adhered that uh, card down on the paper there to the right. And then I just want to embellish the bottom. Just it felt a little, a little bare. So in the ephemera pack, there is a vase of flowers. And in the cardstock stickers, there is another vase of flowers. So I decided to just layer those together. And then I'm going to add a tiny phrase sticker right on top of them. So it makes like a little cluster of three things and then uh, that's going to be done. So what I'm gonna do is take off the backing and we're going to adhere this down into my album. And then we're gonna move on to the very last page. Now I did miscount my number of pages. So what I will end up doing is adding some adhesive to uh, the inside portion right here, or is it right here? Yes, right here. So you can see that I have this extra page here. So I'm just gonna add some adhesive and then tape those two pages together. So then I can just add the stay for the experience portion of, that, of the spread we're working on to the inside. And then my last page when I do traveler's notebooks like this, especially for vacations, is always a summary page. So I have a page, it's from uh, In a Creative Bubble again, and it's got like trip highlights on it, and then one, two, three, four, five, and then it's things like, you know, favorite mode of transportation, favorite meal, favorite experience, stuff like that, just questions and prompts that you could answer. So I filled that out for the trip for us, and I used that as like a wrap-up summary on the trip. Um, and that is like the last page here. I don't ever embellish it. I just leave it as it is, just like the front of the page. I just stamp where we were, uh, but I don't actually embellish it. So now that we've got all of the pages done, the next thing we're gonna do is work on sewing this together. Now, I don't know why I never thought of this before, but I had one of you guys comment here and tell me that I should make a template for poking holes in my in my pages in order to bind them together. And that was genius, like so, so genius. So what I'm gonna do here is make my template. So I have a piece of cardstock. It's, I believe it was like three inches wide by uh, eight and a quarter tall. I grabbed my scoreboard here and then a push pin and I'm just poking a hole in the middle where I creased it uh, every half inch. Then once I have the holes poked, I'm gonna bring it out like this and just stick my push pin all the way through it to uh, widen that hole a little bit, make it easier to see. And then we'll go ahead and put all of the uh, the scoreboard away and everything. Yeah, prior I used to poke all of my pages the same way I did this template. This is so much easier, like seriously. You guys, you saved me a headache. 
because I make these all the time. So eventually I will get myself a book binding tool. I think I'm going to ask for it for Christmas, uh, but we're not there yet. And my, my birthday is four days after Christmas. So for me, I have to wait until the end of the year every year for asking for anything, <laughs> anything like that. So uh, yes, yeah. so, but that is going on my, on my wish list for sure. So uh, the cover I had originally cut at a little bit taller. So it's a little bit taller and a little bit wider than an average page. I believe it's nine inches wide. And then I did just trim it down to eight and a quarter tall. So then I got to thinking about how I could make a closure for this book. And I came up with the idea of using a piece of acetate to wrap around the book and then using one of those really cute uh, paper clips from the Horizon Collection as the like pin that holds it closed. So what I do is I grab one of these from my stash. I don't even know how wide it is. It's just, it was a scrap piece from December Daily went and got it out of my December daily stash. And it's the full length wide, so it's 12 inches wide. So then I scored it where the spine is, and that was great. Like I, I don't regret that at all. But if you guys are going to repeat this, my advice is to only score the binding. Um, it works the way that I did it. Like what I have is going to work. It'll be fine. But when you undo it, it does get kind of wonky. So I, I kind of wish that I would have not done any additional scoring, just, just the spine and then let the other part wrap around, um, wrap around the book. So, you know, do what I say, not what, I, not what I do. <laughs> if you are to repeat this. But otherwise, this works out brilliantly. Like I will totally do this again because it worked out so good. So now that we've got the um, plasticky, the acetate piece ready and scored and ready to go, next I'm going to go ahead and work on poking holes in all of these pages. So I do leave, uh, I believe like the first two in just to show you guys, and then um, we'll skip over a bunch of it uh, in order to get to the actual stitching part. So I am using the Sizzix Stamper's Secret Weapon, which has two sides. So one side is kind of felty and one side is just like foam. So I flipped it over on its back and that is what I'm using to push my pin into uh, in order to get it to go through all of the things. So the um, this acetate piece, I... So, with the acetate piece, I should say, I started putting the template portion on the inside. It just helped me better gauge where the spine actually was. So I'm going to poke holes in the spine. And this, by doing it this way, I can actually stitch on the closure portion, um, which is ultimately going to make things like really nice and sturdy at the end. Then we're going to go ahead and work uh, page by page. So I just... Uh, I use those alligator clips and um, or binder clips and put one at the top just to hold it in place and then I just you know apply pressure to keep the rest of it in place and then we're just going to start building the book so like there's the first one um, and then we're going to do the same thing here so we're going to line it up here at the top right where that crease is add my clip on there so it doesn't move and then as long as I hold the bottom steady. I could put another clip at the bottom, but it just was more work that didn't that I didn't feel like I needed to do. Um, and then, you know, poke the holes all the way down. So now we've got all the holes in there. Uh, they are all at the same level because I used my template to mark which side was the top and which side was the bottom. And now what I'm going to do is count the number of holes. I believe there are 16 holes, which means that number eight in well eight and nine are the middle ones so I counted down to eight and then what I'm going to do is push my or stitch from the inside of that first page through to the back and we're going to do that for every single page so I'm going to count down to the middle which is you know number eight hole number eight and we're going to push it through there since this piece is going in the middle and it's not the full size of the book, I just recounted the number of holes here and then uh, found the middle and you know put my needle through that middle hole. So now we've got you know the middle portion done. What I'm gonna do on the inside of this is leave a somewhat substantial tail. 
because I'm going to need it to tie off the middle when I get when I get to the final step of stitching this closed and I don't want it to pull through. So I've got the tail. I will tell you guys that the acetate piece is pretty difficult to push a push a needle through. It's doable for sure, but it does take some like wiggling and finagling to get it to work. And then what I do is I set my book up upright, just like this, and I work page by page and stick my needle through the hole that it goes through next. Um, it, sometimes it'll just go straight through them, but I don't want to add any additional holes. I want it to go through the ones that I made. So I just leaf through it, make sure that it's lined up to the correct one, and then push it through, tighten everything up, and then just keep going. So we're going to straight stitch this all the way up to that very top hole. Once we get there, we're going to turn around and come back down and then take it all the way to the bottom of this album. Um, when we get to, like when you're coming down, so when you're, when you're going back through the holes that you've already stitched through, it becomes much easier. All you have to do is push that pin through. So you don't have to worry about leafing through the pages on the second stitch of those pages, if that makes sense. I do show you guys once we get to um, once we get to the bottom. So I will skip over a portion of this. So you don't have to watch me sew up this entire book. I also like to make sure that everything is really tight as I'm sewing it. So here's where you can see I'm getting to the very very bottom. I've gone all the way up to the top. I've gone all the way up to or all the way down to the bottom. So I've flipped it over now and we're working on the bottom part. And then uh, here's where you can see that I'm literally just going to push it right back through and I don't have to leaf through the pages anymore because now that that thread is already through there, it's like guiding my needle on where that hole is at. So we're just going to go through it and get ourselves back to the middle. But like I said, make sure to keep things as tight as possible while you're working through this. Um, that way, you know, you won't have it, you won't have any buckling of your thread as you are stitching this up. So we are now at the middle and we're going to do our very last stitch here, pull it all the way through, and then we're going to cut it off but leave a tail just like that. So then the last step for stitching this is to tie it in the middle. I just double knot it and then I leave a tiny little bit of tail at the at the ends so that it doesn't unravel. Um, and then you know I just kind of like tuck those in the spine and then we can close it. You do kind of have to like give it some love and wiggle it a bit together so that it gets used to being closed. And then I'm going to finish up this closure bit. So what I'm going to do um, and here again, see I folded it again in order to make it like cup the pages and it works okay. But this is where like when it's open, it kind of gets in the way. You can see it there that it's, it doesn't just open flat, which I wish I would have just let it open flat and, and get out of the way of the picture of the pages, but you know, it's whatever. So I grabbed over one of those clips. I'm going to use the pink globe uh, paper clip. It's so cute. And then I am going to make a mark. I just grabbed a marker and I'm going to make a mark at where the two pieces come together. I do, um, I want to say I make it maybe a centimeter big. Like I make a really small slit and then it ultimately needs to be a little bit bigger to, to allow for some wiggle room and to allow for me to actually get them closed. It's It was a little more difficult to close uh, with a smaller hole. So I'm going to go ahead and make those markings and then cut the slits. So once I have the top one done too, I just add that top flap on top on top of the bottom flap and add a mark where they cross over. Then I can cut a slit in the bottom and in the top and now we can put those two together. So I do go ahead and make those slits a little bit bigger than I did here. I just edited that out. I figured you guys didn't need to see me do it again. And then I'm going to take this paper clip and put it through both of the holes in order to hold this book closed. So there we go. That is going to do it. So we'll slow down and close out. All right, you guys, that finishes out this travel album. So we've got all of the pages made. The album itself is stitched shut. And I did at the last second decide to add this little closure piece since I knew it was going to be thick and chunky. So that actually helps to hold it closed and I super like that idea. So let me show you the pages that we worked on today. We have, where did, 
we start? I think we started right here. So we did one, two, three, and this one is the double flip out. And then that last little wrap up page. And then that is this whole album. So I think that this turned out super cool. And um, I hope that it gave you guys lots of inspiration for creating a traveler's notebook or any project using a traditional scrapbooking collection. Um, I will very likely film a final flip through of this album and probably will have that up next Saturday for you guys just to see the whole thing at a glance. Um, and then I guess it's time to figure out what the next travel album I will be working on will be. Thank you guys so much for following along with this project. And um, yeah, until next time, I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. And I will catch you all in the next video. <laughs> Bye now.